What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel, the best place for young professionals who want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. In today's video, I want to go over how to get a home below market value. So if you're looking to get a home below market value at a great price, or you're looking to buy the very first time and save some big bucks, this video will provide you with my tips for finding homes below market value and what you can do to snatch them up. By the way, if you want a guide to how to get your dream home at an amazing price and make sense of this whole thing and, and get a great deal, check out the ebook in the description below. It's a free training that I created to go over exactly how to get an amazing price on your dream home no matter what market you're in. So I want to give you a little bit of background and just tell you our story and how we came across this house that we now live in it was out of our budget we thought that we couldn't make it work but by pulling some strings and putting a plan into action we we're able to so it was december 2017 we we're sitting in our living room we were in a one bedroom condo at the time and we were about to leave for our honeymoon so we had just gotten married in may and it was december we we're gonna go to europe new year's and what had happened was we had just closed on this home. We went from a one bedroom condo to a four bedroom detached house in Richmond Hill and we got it for 100k below asking. In 2017, which is kind of the peak of real estate prices in the last decade. So we were able to get an amazing deal on this house where we now live and we're um, growing our family in this house and it, if it wasn't for looking into our options this would have never have happened because at first glance most people would be like uh that's not doable it's it's kind of out of reach it's out of the budget and they don't want to look into it but because we followed through with the plan the steps that i'm going to outline for you in this video we're able to do that and now we live in this amazing house so a few months prior to having our offer accepted in the fall we were just kind of looking for fun, we weren't really anticipating to find anything. Our original plan was to get something pre-construction. You know, it was easier on the on the budget up front. And that way down the line, we would have something lined up for our family to grow into and for the next move from our one bedroom condo. But we found this place and we couldn't pass it up. So we put a plan into action. And then next thing you know, we had a four bedroom home waiting for us when we came back from our honeymoon, which is an amazing feeling. So the question is, what are the factors or variables that influence the selling price of a home or getting a home below market value? And how can you use them for your benefit? When it comes to selling a home and the selling price of a house or a condo, the final selling price, it comes down to three factors. The three factors are market value, competition, and speed. First, market value is what are the other comparable properties in that area selling for. So if you're looking for a three bedroom house or a four bedroom house, what are the other three or four bedroom houses in that area actually selling for? This is gonna give you what the market value is because generally, if they're all in the same condition, people are generally going to value all three bedroom homes or four bedroom homes that are relatively the same at relatively the same price. One big thing to keep in mind is that we're talking about the selling price and not the list price. The list price is the sticker price. What do they put up on MLS? What are they hoping to sell it for? 99999, 2 million, 3 million, whatever it says there. Don't let that kind of guide your thoughts and discourage you from making an offer because what it says as the list price isn't necessarily what it's going to sell for. The selling price is out of the homes that are already sold that are comparable to the one that you're looking at, what are the selling prices? What are people actually willing to pay for those types of homes? So you want to look at the last two to three months, something really recent, comparable properties in the same condition and what are the homes actually selling for? That's gonna give you the current market value and that's where people should start where they price their homes. So the next is competition. Competition is how many other buyers are in the market right now 
for the same type of home that you're looking at. So if there are a ton of buyers and the inventory or the number of listings that are out there are really low, then it's going to push the price up. It ends up becoming a seller's market or what they call a seller's market in that the people who are selling their homes because there's not enough inventory out there have the advantage. They're going to have more buyers looking at their property, thus the property becomes more valuable and the list price or the selling price get pushed up. So you're looking at what is the current level of competition right now, how many other buyers are you competing with, and that's also going to affect what the eventual end sales price of that house or the house that you're looking for becomes. And the last major factor that affects the selling price of a home or condo is speed. And when we're talking about speed, we're, we're talking about speed to closing. How much time does the seller have? Sometimes they may be willing to wait. They may be willing to wait three, six months to sell their home, no problem. But in a lot of cases, sellers are trying to sell their homes as quickly as possible. Maybe they have a mortgage that they're paying and the house is vacant. Maybe they're an out of town investor. No one's living in the home and they're paying the mortgage and they want to get rid of the house as quickly as possible. If there's a shorter timeline, and you have time on your side because time is putting pressure on the seller, you might be able to negotiate for a lower selling price in exchange for that seller getting a quicker closing. So if you're flexible on your dates and you're able to close quickly and sell to that need, a lot of sellers will be able to or might be willing to accept a lower price in exchange for that quickness of closing. So how can you use these to your advantage? Okay, the first tip is to start right now. It costs you nothing to speak to an agent and have a pulse or have your ear to the ground when talking about the real estate market. It costs you nothing to know what's going on in your market, what are the listings in your price range or what are the types of homes that you're looking for and just keep an eye out for, for deals like this. If we weren't looking or had someone looking for us, we would have completely missed out on this deal, right? And we were able to use our three factors to our advantage. It was 2017 and although the market was at peak that year, it had kind of cooled off by the time fall, winter had come. The market value wasn't at peak, it was still pretty high, but the market value had come down for that year. For competition, it was a time where a lot of people weren't buying. I believe there was a stress test or something mortgage related. At that time, it was hard for people to get mortgages at that time. So the number of buyers in the market dropped. So the competition had dropped. And then lastly, for speed, because we were looking, because we had an ear to the market through another agent, he found this property, we checked it out. And because of those first two factors, we made an offer and based on the, the factor of speed, like we talked about, our seller was an out of town investor. They had the home, it was vacant for six months. So we used that speed factor to our advantage that was able to lower the price by 100K and we got this home, a detached home, we upgraded to kind of a family home for 100K below market value. If we weren't starting right now although we were looking forward like maybe we'll buy a home in the next few years we had started our search right through an agent we had started our search just in case and it cost us nothing and we were rewarded with this great deal so the first tip is to start right now and just start looking right have an ear to the ground ask an agent to look for you and you never know what you're going to come up with the second tip is to always remember that speed is king when it comes to getting a great deal. It's kind of like Boxing Day or Black Friday when there's a deal or Amazon Prime Days, there's like a flash sale. It only lasts for a short amount of time and because there's so many buyers in the market and a good deal goes fast, people snap them up. So in order to not only find a good deal but take advantage of it, you have to be fast, right? So just like I said, having an agent to look out for you that's key, but also talking to a mortgage agent, seeing where you stand. If you're always in contact with a mortgage agent, someone that you can uh, trust, 
you can get pre-approvals really quickly. The thing that stops most people from getting a good deal is is the speed. Like, oh, I gotta do this first, I don't know an agent, and all of these obstacles and roadblocks just add time to their process. But if you have an agent that's already looking for you, you're gonna know about this deal as soon as it comes up. You have a mortgage agent who's gonna get you a pre-approval within a day or two. You can act on the deal and take advantage as quickly as you possibly can. And just as a side note, that goes for your financials as well. You should look into when approximately do you plan on making an investment in real estate and how much money do you need. Look at what is a good investment. Like, is it really necessary or a good idea for you to lock up money in a longer term investment, which may give you a slightly higher return but you lose that liquidity or the fluidity of having that cash on hand because it's locked up in some sort of investment product if you don't have the mobility and the ability to react fast and put down a deposit that could hurt you in the long run especially because the market the real estate market is ever increasing ever going up and list prices are always going up you may gain some interest or you may gain a higher return on a slightly better investment product, but in the end, is that gonna cover the difference between buying a home now and buying a home later down the road, which could be thousands of dollars. So you should weigh that in your calculations or your long-term planning. That's a kind of a, a topic for another video, but that's something you should consider when you consider speed into your process. The third tip is do not be afraid to make an offer. It costs you nothing to make an offer. Obviously don't make offers on places that you wouldn't live in, but if you're looking for a place, you find a good deal, and knowing that these three factors are there and playing with the variables, Talk to your agent and don't be afraid of making an offer. The worst thing that could happen is the offer will come back and, and they reject you. But if they don't reject you and they counter, then you're in play and then you can work back and forth and possibly get a great deal out of it. But if you don't make that offer in the first place, you'll never know. So same thing happened with us. We made a lower offer. Unfortunately, it wasn't accepted, but they came back because based on the factors that we knew about, they wanted to sell the home. They were motivated sellers. So they came back, we worked something out, and we still got a great deal on the home. So don't be afraid of making offers, especially for first time home buyers. I know it can be really scary to make an offer for the first time, but the more you do it, it's a learning process where you get better at making competitive offers and you get better at the process and, and it's partially for you to understand as well the process and the push and pull of making an offer and negotiating for a great deal. So don't make an offer on something that you wouldn't live in or you wouldn't actually want to buy, but don't make, don't be afraid to make an offer on a property that you actually like. And one bonus tip that I want to give you is to minimize conditions. And this is mostly for the actual offer making process. When you're making an offer on a home, a lot of buyers will include conditions. So it's conditional upon me getting approved for my mortgage. It's conditional upon inspecting a home and a great home inspection. It's conditional upon if it's a condo reading the status certificate and being okay with everything that's in the status certificate. Conditional upon the wear and tear of the home, different things like that. So one thing you can do is minimize the conditions and that's going to make your offer a little bit more competitive. So it's kind of like if you ask someone to go pick up something at the mall for you, for example, but it's snowing, you got to change the tires on the car first, you can only park outside and they have to walk another mile from the end of the parking lot into the mall and then they have to pay for it and then you're gonna pay them back. There's all these kind of roadblocks and things that they have to do. They're gonna be less likely to want to help you out because it's like, uh, it's inconveniencing them. If you're able to remove as many inconveniences for them as possible, it's gonna be a smoother transition into the sale or it's removing friction as it's called in the sales process. You wanna eliminate as many speed bumps on their way to completing the deal as you possibly can. I'm not saying to remove all conditions just 
just cause to make a competitive offer. But there are certain ones based on your personal preferences, what your agent recommends, and the whole situation that you're in that you can remove, right? And that's going to help the deal finish smoother and quicker for both you and the seller. Remember, you want a good deal out of this. You want your main objective is to get a good price. And that's based on what the seller is willing to uh, concede to or, or give in to. But at the same time, in order to get that from him, it's a push and pull. You want to give him something in return and speed to closing or the ease of conditions or making it easier for them to actually sell it to you is the best thing that you can do to help your cause in getting a better price for you and your family. So at this point in the video, you've already learned about the three factors that ultimately decide what the selling price of a home will be and how you can use those factors to get a great deal on your dream home or your first home. If you're kind of shaky on what the actual buying process is, check out my previous video where I go over the five first time home buyer mistakes and tips for having a great first time home buying process. And as always, remember the link in the, is in the description to my free training on how to get your dream home at an amazing price. So if you want to get more in depth onto more tactics and strategies to get a great deal on your home, check that out. It's a free download. And if you're interested in learning more about the actual financial part, so now it's like, Sean, we know the buyer's process. We know how to get a great deal, but the issue is we don't have the money. How do we save up money for a down payment? That's the biggest obstacle that we have. If you want to learn more about that, tune into my next video where I'm going to go over step by step how to save money for that down payment or a deposit, how to actually save the money to get that foot in the door and get into the market. So until then, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until then, uh, I will see you in the next one.